What is up YouTube? So today I am answering a question that was asked by a subscriber and he asked, how do you know if you're regular or goofy on a handboard? And at first I thought, well, how do you skate? Then I realized not everyone skates. So if you are confused on what handboarding is, it looks a little something like this. Okay, so this is more of a discussion video. I gave you a little bit of handboarding, so hopefully you don't leave immediately. But a handboard, writing regular goofy is very subjective. So, and it's the same with skateboarding and any other sport. I have a good friend, Austin, who rides goofy on a skateboard, regular on a snowboard. Well, that doesn't make any sense. I have friends who are right-handed and ride goofy and friends who are left-handed and ride regular. Now, I am a normal, average person. I write with my right hand, I kick with my left foot. So I ride regular, and I'm right-handed. But it's not the same for everyone. It all depends on how you start. Um, my good, good friend, the first one who ever, ever lent me a skateboard, the first one who ever showed me anything, and one of best guys I've known, he made sure I knew what my dominant leg was, and that was very important. So Braille uses the example of walking up a flight of stairs, what leg do you start with? And I started with my left leg and I started riding left leg forward. But if he wasn't around and I didn't know that, I probably would have started with my right leg forward because you would assume that's the leg you have more balance on because you're right-handed. Not the case though. And a lot of things like that. So I did do martial arts for 10 years. I took up a very long portion of my life and now I have skateboarded for 10 years. So truthfully, I probably could have started on either foot. And it's just uh, things like that. But now, how do you decide that with a handboard? You don't, I mean, you could walk upstairs on your hands, but how often do you do that? And I'm going to break it down like this. Whatever hand you write with should be your popping hand. And whatever hand you would catch a baseball with, the mitt you're wearing, the glove you're wearing, is going to be your flick hand. And the reason for this is your dominant hand, your writing hand, is going to have the most force. It's going to give you the most pop. And whatever hand you would catch a baseball with has the most range of motion. So that's what I would recommend, but that's entirely up to you guys. Now, this is also something I recommend. If you ride regular on a handboard or goofy, doesn't matter, you decide this, you are dominant with your right hand, we'll say, and you're gonna use the right hand to pop off the tail. And in 40 minutes and you can't figure out how to ollie, don't switch hands yet. Wait until you learn how to ollie. And then if you so choose, learn switch ollie. I can do, you know, all ollies. That That's not really that big of a deal. And you guys probably could learn that in a day. Ollies are a lot easier when you break it down, when you think of them. And there is quite a bit of tutorial videos on them. And then you can decide, well, this way feels a lot better than this way. It's just all what your brain's going, uh, going to react to it and what your hands are going to do in return. So I hope this video was educational for you. Like I said, dominant hand, your writing hand, pop the tail, whatever hand you're going to catch a baseball with, which should be your other hand, you go ahead and catch it. And for any of those strange cases out there, like my brother who is ambidextrous, uh, do whatever you want, guys. And as always, thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And check out the bonus clip for kind of a cool trick, a little sloppy, but kind of cool, I think. Have a great day.